Will housing continue to boom? Or is the bus just around the corner? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article written by Stephen Kakoulis for Yahoo Finance. House prices go boom is a bust around the corner. Now here is the question. A lot of people are hoping for a correction in house prices, for the affordability to be a little bit more reasonable. But is that just desperate hope? Will the government intervene more and more? Are the media articles that we read about potential 40% falls or 30% falls, were they simply done to encourage the government to intervene? Will they open the floodgates to bring people into Australia to continue to prop up the housing sector? Or will Home Builder Mark II suddenly appear just before the election? And what other interventions can they do? Really? Think about it, guys. Will we get Mortgage Keeper if there's a fault of mass defaults or risk of it? Because frankly, anything's up in the, you know, anything is up in the air now. Everything can be possible without government. So right around Australia, house prices are rising strongly, unless you're in apartments. To be sure, some of the current rebound follows a period of weakness during the COVID-19 lockdowns in 2020. But the force of the price increase in early 2021 is reaching record levels. Auction clearance rates also remain high, and the daily house price from CoreLogic confirms strong gains over the past months. Auction clearance rates, well, take them only as a trend, everyone, not as a gospel. The currency, sorry, the current cyclical price surge is linked to a few basic issues, low interest rates, the easy availability of credit, government incentives, and the surge in first home buyers tapping the market satisfying at least part of the pent-up demand that had been building over recent years. I mean, I see it in the comments. People are discussing, should I get in? Should I buy in? Oh, I just got in. I mean, it comes down to your ability to finance it, to run it, and your risk profile. Just think, what if what if your repayments doubled? Okay, it all, you know, suddenly interest rates over, you know, by 2024, we were sitting at 7%. Could you afford to make those repayments? If you can, fantastic. Build a buffer. Plan. And do you have one income stream or multiple income streams? What happens if there's a snap lockdown in Queensland and your tourism business is shut down? Oh, worst case, you lose everything. You have to rebuild again. Won't be fun, but it's part of life. So, there are some issues ahead which cast doubt on the sustainability of these price gains. Most of the issues supporting house price gains are unlikely to still be in place at the end of 2021 and into 2022. In particular, the rise in government bond yields is a precursor to higher mortgage interest rates, at least for some fixed-term loans. Further, there is growing pre pressure for APRA to impose tighter lending rules, which is likely to make it harder for some borrowers to gain access to credit. Furthermore, some of the government incentives have or will be coming to an end, which could dampen the growth in first home buyer activity. Supply and demand are a big threat. There are bigger issues emerging for house prices as I write. These involve the interplay of supply and demand, supply coming from the construction of new dwellings, demand being driven by broader population growth, and more specifically net immigration flows. History shows that the strong rise in house prices over many years was driven by population growth with demand outpacing the ability of builders to construct more dwellings. Well, it's not just the builders to construct more dwellings, it's for developers to develop land, it's for access to land, it's for, for zoning restrictions, it's for the Nimbin, not in my backyard crowd. There's a lot going on as well. There's a lot of issues. And there are people legitimately voting for political parties to limit the uh, amount of construction near their investment properties. You know, that's what they're taught at these investing courses. Vote for the Greens. They'll stop low-cost housing and keep your investment rents high. I'm not kidding. The econ economics of this is simple. It also shows up in the state and territory data on population and capital city housing price growth over the past decade. The following presents a short examination of the supply and demand pressures in each state and territory and the capital cities. The findings are based on 
three simple facts, population growth demand, the change in the number of new dwellings supply, and the change in house prices. The changes are from 2011 based on the latest ABS data. So Sydney, strong house prices, a 15.6% increase in the number of dwellings, a 12.8% increase in the population. There's a slight dwelling shortage. Sydney house prices are up 67.8%. Melbourne, strong house prices since 2011, 21.8% increase in the number of dwellings in Victoria, a 20.1% increase in population and a slight dwelling shortage. House prices are up 44.7%. let us look at Queensland. Since 2011, a 19% increase in dwellings, a 15.3% increase in population. A moderate oversupply of dwellings. House prices are up 257 Now, I'd imagine this would also include the oversupply of apartments. Have a look at South Brisbane, guys. It's nuts there. They're giving away a year free mortgage, which is just a smart way for developers to hide the fact that they're discounting their products. And the problem is living in these areas, it's just a nightmare to get around, to get in and out. I'm glad I don't have my office in West End anymore. So Adelaide, moderate house prices. Since 2011, a 10.2% increase in dwellings and a 7.7% increase in population. They've got a shortage. And house prices are up 22.7%. See, house prices are up everywhere. But does this account for inflation? So Perth, very weak house prices. Since 2011, a 19.4% increase in dwellings, a 12.2% increase in populations, a significant oversupply of dwellings. House prices are up 1.8% since 2011. So it hasn't even kept up with inflation then. Hobart, strong house prices. Since 2011, 8.3% increase in dwellings, 5.7% increase in population, a slight shortage, 56.8% house price increase. I mean... Hobart, the property there is catching up with the mainland. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I, Tasmania's great. Bloody cold. You know, particularly for a Queenslander going down there. I remember when I was there on a uni trip, we, we had to light fires in the house. I never, lit in a, I never lit a fire in a fireplace in my life. Queensland life, guys. So Darwin, very weak house prices. Since 2011, 16.9% increase in the number of dwellings in the NT, 5.9% increase in population, a significant oversupply, houses are up 9.6%. Canberra, moderate house prices. Since 2011, 24.8% increase in dwellings, 16.6% increase in population, a significant oversupply of dwellings, house prices are up 32%. The results. Darwin and Perth are the two cities where the increase in the number of new dwellings has significantly outpaced population growth. And that has had the weakest and that have had the weakest markets in terms of house prices. Cities have a dwelling shortage. Sydney, Melbourne and Hobart saw strong gains in house prices. That's it. You need to make it easier for people to build. You need to get out of the way. You need to reduce the red tape, the hoops you need to jump through. We need to simplify our houses. You've got all of these onerous requirements on them here in queensland you, you know you need so many star ratings on a new house and that's just more more tests and paperwork and bs all this embodied you know you need to have all this insulation and requirements put in the buildings that if you look in the embodied energies and the cost of electricity it's, it's not going to be cost neutral for 50 years all of these things increase the cost of housing so looking ahead australia's population growth has stalled there is a small increase in natural population, more births than deaths, but immigration is actually going backwards as the border closures associated with COVID-19 continue and people leave Australia. There will be no immigration in Australia until the COVID-19 issue is dealt with and when there are mass vaccinations. And even then, it is likely that the immigration inflows will be well below pre-COVID-19 levels. At the same time, there is a strong pipeline in new dwelling construction, which will add significantly to supply through 2021 and 2022. Boiled down, there will be significant oversupply of dwellings emerging over the next couple of years. And given the history of supply and demand pressures, house price growth is likely to be weak, regardless of interest rates, regardless of government incentives. It is a curious house price mini boom at the moment, brought on by a few positive influences and a relief from the COVID-19 pandemic didn't hit us harder. It looks unlikely to be sustained for much longer, and when it is clear there are too many properties for the current population, the supply and demand dynamics should see prices weaken. 
or will push our political leaders to address that weakening by more intervention and maybe opening up the gates. What do you what do you reckon, everyone? What do you think will happen? Or am I just getting too cynical here? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. So right now we're in a house price boom. Is the bust just around the corner? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy my content, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliates from the links below. You can buy merch from Heiser Says or support us using PayPal. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.